Laura was born on 29 of October 1711. In 1732, she earned a degree of doctor in philosophy from the University of Bologna. A few months later, because of her remarkable scientific skills, the Senate of the University assigned her an honorary position at the chair of Philosophia Universa, that is, of natural philosophy. In the following years, the young woman continued to study. In 1738, she married Giuseppe Veratti, a doctor in medicine who shared with his wife a keen interest in the study of nature. In 1745, Pope Benedict XIII admitted Laura Bassi among the elite group of scholars named Benedictine academics, but only as a supernumerary and not without resistance. Filling this role, she had to present at least one original dissertation a year. In this way, Laura played an active role inside the Bolognese scientific community. For performing her talks, Laura carried out several experiments with her husband in her own home, in a special laboratory that the couple had equipped with the most advanced tools and machines of the time. This laboratory was used not only for her personal research, but also for the private lessons in experimental physics that Laura Bassi held for philosophy and medical students of the university. The almost 30 years of high-level lessons held by Laura at her home earned her the assignment of the position, this time effective, of Professor of Experimental Physics in the Institute of Sciences in 1776. Only two years later, on the morning of February 20, 1778, Laura Bassi died suddenly, after having participated in a session of the Academy of Sciences the previous evening. This woman, a forerunner of female emancipation, remains an admirable example for all women of science still today. It has been built at the ESO, at Cerro Amazones, uh, Amazones in Chile, and uh, the technical first light of the ELT is planned for the 20, this decade, at the end of this decade in 2027. Uh, here's an uh, artistic view of the telescope des design. Very briefly, the telescope has an aperture of um, 39 uh, meters, uh, the primary mirror, and uh, the optical solution is a folded uh, three mirror anastigmatic, anastigmat uh, made with the primary, secondary, and tertiary. And um, the folding to the Nasmith Foki uh, is provided by a uh, deformable M4 and a deep till M5 uh, mirrors. The total Nasmith uh, field of view is around 10 arc minutes. As designed, optical quality of this telescope is diffraction limited. Um, you can find tons of information and very nice um, uh, animations here in, this, uh, in these links uh, from ESO that uh, I invite you to visit them. Well, now Metis. As I mentioned already, METIS is one of the first three instruments for the ELT and a consortium of 12 research institutions from 10 countries plus ESO is developing it. The principal investigator institute is in, in NOVA, is NOVA in Netherlands. The, um, 
I want to point out a bit in this uh, picture, the people and the instrument are, uh, have the same scale. The main meta-science uh, goals are the detection of and characterization of exoplanets, the investigation of protoplanetary disks, and the formation of planets. Uh, the science cases for METIS dictate the following key requirements for the instrument design. The instrument will offer a diffraction limited imaging and medium resolution slit spectroscopy in the L, M, and N bands. As well, it will offer high resolution integral field um, spectroscopy in the L and M band from three to five uh, microns. The field, uh, this high resolution spectroscopy has a uh, half a square arc seconds. And uh, I hear something, no? And um, a resolution, a resolution power of uh, 100,000 um, resolution. The imaging and spectroscopy can also um, be combined with the uh, coronographic uh, for high resolution, uh, for high contrast imaging. So summarizing is a mid-infrared camera and a spectrometer from uh, 3 to 14 microns and uh, with uh, diffraction limited performance. Um, Again, I invite you to visit these great pages from the um, PI Institute and uh, also at the MPIA and also at ESO with uh, a lot of more detailed information. METIS is, uh, will be located in the it, uh, in an ASMIS uh, platform. This is METIS. Metis and it will uh, share uh, the, the platform with other two instruments, uh, Mikado, we can see here over this structure, and Harmony. Um, yeah. Concerning the project schedule, uh, the um, instrument has just passed uh, the, um, the so called long lead items, uh, optical FDR, uh, that uh, in this Jul July 2021. That uh, this milestone uh, gives us the, the, the green light to start the, um, the procurement uh, of, the, of these low lead items for, for the optics. The um, complete FDR, uh, the complete FDR for uh, the complete instrument will it is planned for 20 to, at the end of next year, 2022. And uh, as planned, uh, up to date, the on-site assembly of the instrument at Cerro uh, Amazones, it is planned for 2028, 2028. Um, Max, Plan, uh, Max Plan Institute for Astronomy in PIA uh, is the second largest uh, consortium partner in METIS. It is responsible for the image and the single conjugate adaptive optics through systems and uh, holds, holds in addition three key roles uh, within the METIS consortium that are the instrument scientist, the um, adaptive optics lead, and the thermal lead. I would like to provide you here um, to show you uh, the, the team at the MPIA and uh, the pitch. So let's go with the, um, with the optical design. Um, this is an overview of the optical overview of the complete METIS. The instrument consists in uh, basically of, uh, of two separate units. The, um, the image here, uh, top right, and uh, the high resolution spectrum here below. Um, to achieve uh, diffraction limited performance, METIS will use a single conjugate adaptive optics system to compensate atmospheric turbulence. The adaptive optics waveform uh, sensor is loca located here below, and uh, it will measure the in, in, inside METIS um, the, the wavefront 
and this information will be used to uh, to control the adaptive mirror um, M4 of the ELT. Uh, common for optics feeds uh, these uh, three subsystems. This common for optics and uh, provides the optomechanic, the optical and the optomechanical interface between the various uh, subsystems. All, all of these uh, uh, four subsystems are encased, encased in a cryogenic environment in a vacuum vessel, here in blue. And uh, to maintain the stable low temperatures required for uh, good performance at mid-infrared wavelengths. In this simplified uh, mechanical um, view, we can see the, the subsistent envelopes in the different colors and appreciate how are they packed into, into the cryostat. Uh, the, the light coming from the ELT, uh, this is the entrance window of the, the cryostat, is located here. The, all, the, the system also contains, or the instrument also contains a fifth uh, subsystems. This is in pink, which is the um, warm calibration unit. And uh, in addition, the, um, uh, the cryostat, it, uh, it is held by the warm, the warm uh, system structure, very simplified in this uh, schema. Uh, so it's a quite complex instrument. Uh, at the end. Then, as I have just said before, MPIA is involved in the METIS project uh, having these responsibilities. And uh, as the optical engineer at MPIA, I would like to talk uh, in particular about my work in the um, uh, image and the wavefront sensor. Uh, the image. Uh, the image in a nutshell. shell. Here in this table uh, are the values as presented in the um, uh, final design review uh, that took place this July, as I said. The image provides uh, diffraction limited imaging in the LM and M bands and um, with a field of view of around 11 seconds in the LM uh, atmospheric band and uh, 13 uh, are seconds in end. The, um, uh, it includes also low resolution, low medium resolution spectroscopy, using Grismus in introducing the collimated beam. And it has also the capability of pupium viewing. The um, optical solution um, is driving there is an echo. There is an echo. I will, I will continue, but someone has the microphone. Oh, sorry. Uh, so I was saying that uh, the optical solution for the image is driving not only for the scientific uh, requirements, such as the field of view, to have a collimated beam, uh, the, 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 the coverage of the wavelength, the, the wavelength range, um, the capabilities or the performance, but also for technical requirements that um, and are common for uh, cryogen, all cryogenic systems. Um, a compact design and simple interface is a, is a must, um, and also manuf manufacturability. To uh, summarize the optical concept, the, um, this is based on pure reflective optics for, uh, because of the wavelength range coverage, with three units, one common collimator and the two cameras are the three units. And then um, these three units are solved with uh, three, uh, three mirror anastomatic and a, a design, where the first, and the first and the third mirror of the, this uh, three mirror system uh, share a common uh, a space envelope the mirror optical surface are free form described by Cernike polynomes, and uh, the units 
the three have an a thermal design. This is very convenient to be able to uh, perform its uh, verification at warm for acceptance from manufacturers, for, uh, for example. And uh, aluminum optics has been chosen. As an example, um, this is the final design of the collimator presented for the optical FDR. Uh, we can appreciate here the, the compact design and uh, also the common envelope I, I, I mentioned for the, for the first and the third mirror of the DMA. Uh, this, uh, uh, this approach allows uh, mechanical accuracy in the micro, in the micron uh, range. Uh, just to mention that um, between the preliminary design phase and the final design phase, there were or there have been uh, evolution, some evolution in, of the design. The, I want to um, emphasize um, two of the changes I made in the design. One optical modification that uh, was made uh, to and make the system more compact and the system in general, the, the complete METIS, is uh, to um, initially the input and output uh, optical axis for the collimator and for the two cameras were not parallel. So it's, uh, uh, I was able to um, provide this input and output parallel as it is for FDR. And I have uh, I had implemented this for the collimator and for the two cameras. Another um, another was to change uh, initially the the surface the mirror surface were as spheres and by by conics and uh, but after iteration with manufacturers uh, first iteration with the manuf potential manufacturers. Um, uh, I changed this to Cernike, a Cernike definition. And the performance, I, I implemented this also for the collimator and the two cameras. So the, the final system, the performance uh, is very good. Uh, here as an example, this is the collimator with um, this uh, uh, graphic and uh, represent the wave from error, the RMS wave from error of the complete unit, unit the, three, the three mirrors, and you can see it's diffraction limited. Continuing with the um, optical con concept of the image, um, I described the, the, the single units, the collimator and the cameras, but uh, the image as a whole is, uh, the concept is the col a collimator, um, um, a collimator with uh, dichroic, um, uh, filter that divides the, the light into the LM uh, channel and the N uh, channel to the two cameras. The cold uh, dichroic is located, uh, is located at the collimated beam behind the, colli the, the collimator and it reflects the long wavelengths and demand and uh, transmits the short wavelengths in this case. Uh, so the functional diagram of uh, the image is the common collimator, the dichroic that it split the light, and between the, um, di the uh, between the dichroic and the cameras, there are uh, mechanisms um, filter, uh, to introduce um, filters, masks, grisms, etc. Uh, this is the final um, optical arrangement for the complete image. Uh, the light input is horizontal. Uh, this is provided by the common for optics. For um, uh, the, this is the so-called focal uh, common for optics focal plane two. We call it. Then, then we have the collimator first, the dichroic, and uh, we introduce. Uh, folding mirrors to um, compact, to, to compact uh, and packaging uh, the, the, the complete system. Both cameras also have uh, those, uh, one mirror each to, for packaging purpose, at the end transport of the cameras. The filters, uh, science filters, neutral density filters are located in the collimated beam 
and uh, they are tilted by one degree to in order to avoid ghost images to the detector. This is uh, the waveform error of the complete uh, optical path between the focal plane two and the detector for each channel. Um, up is the uh, LM uh, channel and uh, below the, the N channel. Uh, this is a very nice uh, performance. The um, low may the, the, the capabilities uh, I talk about uh, the image has to have. Uh, this is one, the long, um, long slit spectroscopy or low medium resolution spectroscopy. It, it is made by using RISMS and the collimated introduced in the collimated beam in combination with the corresponding slit at the focal plane, at the input focal plane, focal plane two. There are three Grismus um, uh, designed, they are designed in Germanium and covering the, covering the three bands each. Uh, so three greens covering the three bands and uh, they are direct roulette Grismus. Um, as an example, um, I show here the expected performance for the L band. This is the spectra on the detector uh, from the short uh, 2.9 to long wavelength 4.2. And this is the optical performance. Uh, the the uh, ID disk is the dark circle here. The um, other uh, capability is the pupil imaging capability to re-image the um, primary mirror of the ELT uh, into the science channels. Uh, this is made uh, not only for engineering to um, align the system during integration at the telescope, but also for, for, for science. The pupil viewing capability has been solved introducing a lens doublet, um, a lens doublet here between the exit port of the camera and the detector. This is made uh, by a cryogenic mechanism. This uh, will, will do it. The solution adopted is, uh, this is uh, similar for both channels. These are the doubles, uh, the doublet uh, designed, and um, they are made of uh, thin selenide and thin sulfate, and they only contain a uh, guantanamo and surface uh, on the first lens um, yeah, to achieve the, the required pupil resolution. The expected um, optical quality per design is uh, given here in these two, uh, for these two pupil ray majors for, for the um, L channel and N channel. Um, coming back to the, our initial optical overview of METIS, now that we know a little bit of the box and to summarize the optical solution, they, I will give you here the um, uh, functional overview again. Um, the, uh, momentillo, it's not working, yeah. The image interface is located in the common for optics focal plane two where we will introduce the fill stop masks and the slits mask, et cetera, to depending on the instrument operation mode, the um, dichroic splits the light uh, between the two science channels. And in the collimated beam, we introduce uh, the, the pupil stop masks, the filters, the grismas, et cetera, uh, in the optical path. And finally, the, um, the pupil major lenses that uh, will be between the, the exit port of the cameras and the detectors. Uh, to finalize with the image, uh, um, these are the ongoing activities after the FDR. 
we are now uh, doing the iteration with manufacturers for the low lead items procurements for, for the optics, the, so the three uh, TMA units, uh, the dichroic, including uh, the, the substrate and the customized coating, the, the three brims, um, the science filters and neutral density filters, and the pupil mirror lenses. Mm, we are already starting the, the goal of tenders for processes for, for those uh, procurements. We are also detailing the, the assembly integration plan for uh, the system at uh, MPIA uh, that will be done at MPIA. And uh, in, we are in the process of the design of the test set for the image verific verification at subsystem level. This will be a test cryostat only for to use at MPIA. It's not uh, uh, the final uh, for, for, uh, sent the image to, uh, to NOVA for integration in the complete instrument. Um, okay, so now- Sorry, Conchi, you so, are at 25 minutes now. Wow, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> so <Yeah>. I'm, <laughs> wait, okay. Um, so um, I finished with the major. I will talk very briefly about now the wavefront sensor. The wavefront sensor is located here below, uh, here below, and uh, again um, the single adaptive optics in a nutshell. Uh, driven by the top level requirements that uh, the stress radio and the, at the science uh, wavelengths and performance, the basic requirements of for the SCAO are uh, it uh, it shall be a single conjugate optics pyramid type uh, working in the near infrared band K and H and with a sapphire detector um, able to work with a star located inside a field of view of 27 or seconds provided by the common for optics with modulation uh, to accommodate different guide starts uh, magnitudes and inbuilt inside uh, METIS many working in the cryogenic environment too. So the functional SCAO overview is, uh, uh, it is fed uh, after, by the common for optics, um, uh, by the, this intermediate focal plane, we call it uh, focal plane one, um, by a tilting mirror, uh, a cryogenic uh, mechanism, uh, we, we call this field selector mirror. The system is able to pick up uh, the, um, a guide star within the 27 R seconds uh, provided by the common for optics. A pyramid is located in, the, in a focal plane and by another tip tail mirror, another cryogenic mechanism. Uh, the modulator, uh, we call this uh, the modulator, we provide the modulation over the pyramid. At the detector, uh, we uh, obtain four images of the entrance pupil of the ELT located at the primary mirror of the ELT. Um, and this is the functional overview. In this case, the solution is a refract refractive design uh, composed by three uh, lens units, lens unit one, two, and three. Then um, uh, there are uh, two, uh, uh, two pupil planes, one located in the field selector mirror, another in the modulator, and two intermediate focal planes, one, one after the field selector mirror and another on the tip of the pyramid. Uh, one folding mirror to reduce volume and pack, pack to the system. And the mechanical interface is perpendicular, uh, which is very convenient for, for alignment. And at the detector, uh, we have the, the four uh, pupils of the ELT, uh, the range of the M1. Uh, to give an idea of uh, size, uh, the first uh, triplet is uh, around uh, 165 millimeters and uh, the other two around 50 millimeters in diameter. This is the, um, a top view 
uh, we can see uh, the location of the um, two of the two focal plane uh, focal planes, and this is these are the location of the two pupil planes. And again, at the detector, there is the, the last pupil plane. The, um, this arrangement, optical arrangement, is very, uh, very good because it uh, has access to the modulator, uh, field selector, and um, inter, uh, inter the interface of the, of the detector. For visualization, uh, this is the complete field of view of the 27 R seconds provided by the lens unit one and the field select of mirror, from which uh, we select uh, the gu a guide star within, uh, within this uh, field of view. And the field selection, uh, the field selected is 2.2 R seconds for, for wavefront sensing. At uh, the wavefront sensor detector, the Safira, the four pupils are imaged within six channels of the, of the detector. And each pupil has uh, 90 pixels in diameter that correspond to a pupil of 0.5 meters per uh, uh, pupil sampling at uh, M1 of the ELT uh, correspond to 0.5 meters per pixel. And uh, the ongoing activities for uh, the SCAL module are um, the, um, we are already um, pro prototyping the field selector uh, mechanism and the, and the modulator. They are uh, being prototyped with, uh, uh, for um, physics instrument here in Germany. So we start also the interaction with um, manufacturers for the long lead item procurement. In that case, we have the lenses, uh, the band pass filters, the pyramid, and uh, the, the mirrors. Uh, detailing, we are also detailing the ensemble integration and verification plan. And uh, um, we plan to build a telescope simulator for the subsystem verification at the MPIA. Uh, including a deformable mirror from Alpao. And uh, we are in, uh, designing the test cryostat, another test cryostat for the scale verification at the at subsistence level. And to conclude, uh, I forgot to click for the animation. These are the, the prototypes. Uh, the design for the prototypes of for the cryogenic mechanisms. And these are a um, example of uh, the drawing, the final drawings. This is the pyramid, for example, and the previous was uh, a lens as an example. And uh, the design of the testing cryostat. To summarize, to conclude, um, this is uh, the conclusion I would like to highlight. METIS is the powerful mid infrared ELT major and spectrograph. Uh, main uh, scientific goals, uh, exoplanet, plot, protoplanetary disk, formation of planets. MPIA is the second largest consortium partner responsible for this uh, image and scale subsistence in, in three uh, uh, K roles, things from instrument scientist, SCAO lead, and thermal lead. Uh, the image is um, provide these capabilities, LM and band imaging in these wavelengths, low medium resolution spectroscopy, coronography, pupil <laughs> imaging capability. And the SCAO module is a pyramid adaptive optics uh, working in the infrared range that uh, it will be the first of, he, of his kind. Yeah. And that we pass a very successful optics FDR we are very happy for that, and we are start now the real fun <laughs> manufacturing. <laughs> and uh, thank you. That's all from my side for the moment. Thank, thank you. you very much, and thank you very much for being perfectly on time. Uh, so yes. first of all, I would like to apologize with all of you because we had very last seconds technical problems with the Zoom account, so we had to change our our usual link. We sent a link. Uh, one minute before the the time of the, at, we, at which we plan to start this meeting so i hope that uh, 
that uh, not a lot of people had the major problems in connecting. So again, uh, we are all very sorry about that. So thank you very much for your talk. So if, thank you. if you have any question, you can raise your hand and or write uh, in the chat as you as you prefer. We now I think we have time, 15 minutes or so, at least for for question. So there's in, okay, there's already some questions from the audience. I think the first one was uh, Luigi Spinoglio. So you can unmute yourself and go ahead, please. Yes, uh, just a question about the sensitivity of a spectrograph uh, in uh, in slit mode. Uh, if if I want to look at a galaxy, what is the expected sensitivity for 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 the, the Metis instrument? Uh, not at very high resolution. I mean, it, it's enough. Uh, uh, a res a, an intermediate resolution of, of uh, I think 400 is the expected uh, resolution in the 10 micron band, right? The solution for the spectroscopy, for the low medium spectroscopy, this is the resolution, but you, you ask for the sensitivity. Yes, what is the expected sensitivity? Yeah, the expected sensitivity I cannot tell because this is the the scientific scientific uh, lead. The scientific lead uh, is responsible for that, and I I, I don't have the numbers on, on my head, but I can find out and give to you. Okay, yeah. thank you. Sorry, thank. You. I think the next question is from uh, Kalyan. Kalyan, sorry, don't even try to pronounce your second name. Oh, that's that's not a problem. <laughs> no need. I know Kalyan. Hi, Kalyan. Hi, everyone uh, knows Kalyan. Yeah. Uh, curious question, actually. You mentioned that for the imager, it is uh, there is also the pupil imaging uh, mode. And you also mentioned that there are some science, science interest in terms of having this uh, pupil imaging mode. I'm wondering what are they? So the, the thing is that uh, the, for high contrast imaging, they need to, to know where are the spiders of the secondary mirror. And uh, they, for, for some reason, so when they reduce the data, they need this information. So they need uh, pupil imaging to to superstrap this. Okay, so that means that they, they will use it, let's say, uh, in the beginning of the observation when you have something like a vortex coronagraph or something like that. But while you take the image, you obviously do not have the pupil imaging. You go for the star, for example. Yeah, right? But, but uh, I don't really know the operation mode. Uh, it should be in the, in the web page or they, they know the this is Franz, who is in charge of this high contrast imaging. So um, in principle, you can take image with one channel and have the pupil viewing capability in the other channel or vice versa. So ah, OK, yeah. so you, you can do it simultaneously. In, OK, simultaneously, but I don't know if they need that. Yeah, so they can have uh, one channel with pupil viewing capability um, with the pupil viewing and the other channel with the uh, uh, signs. Uh, with the mask, uh, coronographic mask, etc., science uh, image. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Ganji. Thank you, Colin. The next question is from Alessia Moretti. Hi, it's not a, a real question, just a curiosity, actually. Uh, because I can imagine that all the work that you presented so far is mostly based on things that you do in a laboratory. So my mm. curiosity is, eh, are you, how did you cope with the pandemic situation in this year and a half? Were you able to still work at home? Are we ready to do most of our work at home or not? No, so the, the thing is that right now, the phase we are, is a lot of design. There are, uh, in the laboratory, there, there are not too many things to do. We are doing several things, but we can organize to, uh, 
uh, to go there and and from from time to time. Uh, but uh, all the work was uh, designed, designed, designed for the FDR. So I the pandemic doesn't affect in the sense that uh, I can work and can work a lot <laughs> from home too. <laughs> um, and I am very organized. So I finish the work, I start my life and etc. So it doesn't affect, it have not affect me uh, as other people maybe, yeah. And now we are returning to normal work. So now we are in the lab and now we are starting the lab work and uh, everything is almost normal, let's say. Thanks. Uh, <laughs> so is there any other question? I don't know whether you can help me monitoring the chat. No, I'm monitoring both the chat and the list of participants. So I see no, oh, there is a question. You can speak if you want. Okay, I can read. try to read the question for you. So uh, okay, uh, yeah. Federico. Sorry, uh, Hi, Federico. Uh, okay. Hi. Thanks for the talk. Uh, have you already sketched a strategy for the alignment of the DMA of the imager? So the thing, the thing is that we um, we will procure the units as a unit with um, in the manufacturer. So it will be responsibility of the manufacturer to align it. What I made for the moment is to accommodate the design to the needs of the manufacturability, to, uh, to M1 and M3, the first and the third mirror to be in the common substrate, substrate, the distance between the mirrors, the size of the mirrors, the, how the cernical surface had been defined. These are uh, iteration with manufacturers that I made. So the system is manufacturable, and uh, the will be aligned by the uh, um, uh, manufacturer. Yeah, this is the point. Yeah, uh, M1 and M3 will be uh, will be made in the same substrate. So this uh, simplifies the alignment of the system, uh, reducing the degree of freedom. So that. Mm. This is a uh, response your answer. Do you, uh, this answer your question? More or less? No. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Actually, not. It's a, uh, it's a it's clever yeah. approach. <laughs> I can tell you it's a clever approach. Okay. <laughs> a practical hey, sorry, approach. Hey, what, what about the test of the TME? I mean, you are you putting it in a cryostat? And, uh... Yeah, right. So um, I made the, the design a thermal in the sense uh, with aluminum, when you warm up, everything is symmetric. When I, when you warm up the system, you have a very nice, uh, very good performance also at warm. So the manufacturer um, ha, can do the verification at warm, but the final acceptance of the system will be at cold. So we will uh, we will put the, the DMA in, at the MPIA in the testing cryostat, and we will measure the wave from error at different uh, uh, position of the field. At the uh, visible light, with visible light. Mm, with or, an, yeah, invisible, yeah, with an interferometer that is, uh, everything is uh, mirror. So it will be with visible, uh, neon, laser neon, and uh, it will be with an interferometer which is insensitive to vibrations because uh, we will do through a, a vacuum, uh, through a window in the, in the garage that, so it will be a lot of fun. Thanks. If there's no other question from the audience, I have a curiosity myself. So uh, I hope I've not missed the, the, the number, but do you have an estimate of the sensitivity of the imager? So in terms of uh, detect limiting magnitudes, for example, and or how there, this there compares? Is, there is, but I don't know by heart. <laughs> okay. So, so uh, at least I know we, uh, with the wave sensor, I, I know that we, we have to be able to, to have a guide star up to, magnitude in K band, K band to 10, 10. But the, 
sensitivity. Okay. I know it will be very sensitive in the science like channels, but uh, not by heart. I can okay. find out and tell yeah. you. No, I was wondering about possible synergies with the with the James Webb Space Telescope, for example. Yeah, there are, there are, guess, but yeah. Um, yeah, I'm not the scientist. I know it, it's not your side. <laughs> it's not your your specialty. Field. I do, I do the the all the the, the job. I no one, no yeah, scientist sure. want to do. <laughs> May I ask one other question? If hmm? yeah, sure. Sure. I will okay. find I will find this and tell you, Marco. Thank you very much. So Konji, for, yeah, for the SEAO module uh, where you do the wavefront sensing with the near wavelengths, do you plan to have some kind of system to test this beforehand? Mm, uh, yeah. The calibration so, unit and so and so. Yeah. So the telescope simulator, we, we have called this the telescope simulator. We have to define what are the requirements that this telescope simulator has to have. And I have to design uh, this, this system for verification of the SCAO in the laboratory. Yeah, okay. and uh, it will have uh, the deformable mirror I said from Alpo and uh, many functionalities depends on what we need. But we are defining what we need to verify at subsystem level to, to design the telescope simulator. And you start from the SEAO, just the SEAO module. You are looking yeah, at the performance so, of the SEAO module. Only. Yeah, so at the subsystem level, we have to uh, simulate the interface with the focal plane one. Uh, this is uh, an interface where that contains not only the focal plane one delivered by the common for optics, but also the exit pupil of the common for optics. So we have to mimic these two uh, things, uh, the interface with the common for optics pupil and focal planes. And uh, yeah, and verify a subsystem level, but probably we will use the teles that telescope simulator also at the telescope at uh, no at system at the telescope no sorry at the system level in Leiden when we put together the the metis uh, so scow with the common for optics so we will use the telescope simulator to illuminate the the metis from the entrance window and verify uh, some performance of the scow at the system level but this uh, everything these things are in definition what uh, we will do and what what okay thank you you're welcome i see no other question in the list of so no hands up and no question in the chat so i think we can stop here mm -hmm. so thank you very much conchi and again on behalf of the whole organization sorry again for the technical problems that we had today. And yeah, the next appointment is uh, November 11, if I'm not mistaken. Sarah, please. Okay, he's, not, he's correct. With the, the speaker will be Cecilia Bacchini. So thank you very much, you. everybody. I don't know. Thank you. Kalian thank has you. another question. Oh, no, he was just clapping. <laughs> I know he's clapping. Yes. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you for inviting. Yep. Thank you. Ciao. Bye, ciao. Bye. Bye. Bye.